Hello, my name is Hamdi Salam. Uh, I'm a Rotocraft flight test pilot and I'm going to present to you the VTOL flight envelopes and stall characteristics. Okay, so let's go through the agenda. We're going to discuss uh, the uh, objectives. We're going to go through the applicable special condition VTOL requirements, uh, which uh, are mentioning uh, flight envelopes and stall characteristics. We're going to go through uh, the difference there is in the defining stall characteristics in the CS23 and the special condition VTOL. We're going to go through uh, the uh, flight envelopes in the special condition VTOL and uh, uh, what is uh, EAS expectations on that. We're going to go through some example from AC257D. Uh, we will uh, uh, see some uh, adaptation that can be performed in the special condition VTOL. And we will have a slide with a conclusion. Okay, for the objectives, uh, we're going to identify where in the special condition VTOL we refer to this novel concept of flight envelopes. We're going to provide EASA position on stall compliance demonstration, provide EASA position on flight envelopes, and then identify some possible challenges when defining flight envelopes with VTOLs and in particular for eVTOLs. Now we're going to go through the different requirements from the special condition VTOL in, in all different subparts. I'm going to start with subpart alpha. So the first requirement is a VTOL 2000 applicability and definitions where we have the three different uh, flight envelopes. So starting with the normal flight envelope, which is the flight envelope associated with routine operation and or prescribed conditions. Then we have the operational flight envelope, which is the flight envelope associated with warning onset. And then we have the limit flight envelope, which is associated with aircraft design limits and protection limits. So now we start with the subpart Bravo uh, of the special condition VTOL and the requirements uh, which uh, we are uh, referring to are performance data 2105 which is referring to the operational uh, flight envelope when uh, meeting the requirements of uh, this subpart. Uh, we have also requirement uh, 2110, uh, which is uh, flight envelopes. And this requirement is, of course, uh, saying that you need to determine the normal operation the limit flight envelope. And it's saying that when doing that, you need to take into account the most adverse ambient conditions. Continuing with our uh, subparta Bravo, uh, the next requirement is uh, 2115, takeoff performance. Here we're referring to the operational uh, flight envelope when uh, determining the takeoff performance. Then we have a VTOL uh, 2120, which is a climb requirements. And here we are referring to the normal flight envelope or the operational flight envelope if we consider a category enhanced VTOLs. And uh, finally, we have uh, 2125 climb information. And also here we have a difference uh, depending on the uh, uh, class of the VTOL uh, and we have to consider uh, in some cases the normal flight envelope or the operational flight envelope. Again in subpart uh, Bravo uh, we have the controllability requirement 2135 and here we have a different uh, controllability and handling qualities requirements depending if we are in the operational or in the limit flight envelope. Uh, we have also in uh, point delta another reference to the limit flight envelope and that it says that we need to be able to make a smooth transition from one flight condition to another without putting in danger or exceeding the limit flight envelope. So part bravo again. So we have the requirement 2145 flying qualities. Uh, here we're referring to uh, flight envelopes in, uh, in uh, general. Uh, we have that in uh, Alpha and uh, Bravo. Uh, we have a requirement then at 2150, which is a stall characteristics and stall warning. So this is the first time where we uh, refer to stall in the special condition VTOL and we will see what is the difference in the later slides uh, when we compare it to CS23. Uh, uh, the other requirement we have in uh, subpart Bravo is a uh, 2160 vibration and it says that uh, in a general manner the aircraft needs to be free from excessive vibration uh, throughout the limit flight envelope. Going now into subpart Charlie 
The first requirement I uh, would like to talk to you about is the 2200 structural design envelope. So this requirement is listing all the different uh, design and operational parameters that need to be taken into account when defining the structural design envelope. So we need to take into account the structural design airspeeds, the flight load conditions, the mass variation and distribution over the applicable mass and the center of gravity envelope. So the structural design envelope defines the parameters that are used to define the limit flight envelope. Another requirement that goes hand in hand with 2200 is 2215. So before we listed all the different parameters, here we're going to see what are the combination of flight parameters and load factors at and within the boundaries of the maneuvers and gust envelope. So the flight load conditions, which are defined in VTOL 2215 alpha, defines the limit maneuvers that make up the limit flight envelope. And I'm sure you'll get much more details in other AMC presentation uh, regarding this point. Going to subpart uh, Golf, uh, we have a uh, requirement uh, 2600 flight crew compartment and here also the flight envelopes are referred to uh, even though only in a more general way. Now we're going to go through the stall characteristics and the difference between CS23 and the special condition VTOL. So in the CS23 amendment 5, 232110 is the stall speed requirement. In CS23, if an aircraft can stall, which uh, usually is the case, then you would also need to look at uh, 232150, which is stall characteristics, stall warning, and spins. In this uh, slide, you will see in the left column, we have the CS23 Amendment 5 requirements. So we have listed the 2110 and the 2150. And in the middle column, we have the ASTM material which you need to refer to to show compliance to the requirements. So in a special condition VTOL, we have uh, two possible cases. If the stall is a characteristic of the aircraft, even if only in the limit flight envelope, then you would need to determine the minimum stall speed according to CS232110, which in the end refers to F3179M as STM standard, which is mainly the same requirements of CS23 Amendment 4. And once you have determined the minimum stall speed, then you would need to determine the stall characteristics, stall warning and spins according to 232150, which refers to F3180 low speed flight characteristics with the score system. If the stall is not uh, uh, possible, uh, it's simply out of the safety objective, then you would need to show compliance to VTOL 2110 flight envelopes and provide evidence that stall is outside of the limit flight envelope and you would only need to show compliance to VTOL 2150 uh, only if it's uh, required by some uh, uh, other requirement or only to show uh, what would happen in a recovery from uh, departure from controlled flight. So we spoke before about subpart Charlie and the structure requirements. Uh, let's, let's see how those work for us. So we have defined the parameters according to MOC uh, VTOL 2200 and we could think about them as uh, different airspeeds, uh, power settings, uh, load factor, aircraft configuration and mass, ambient conditions, density altitude and OAT. And then we would need to uh, see all the different combinations according to MOC VTOL 2215 and this would uh, eventually uh, give us the limit flight envelope. So the limit flight envelope or the design limits of the aircraft are here shown as the red area. We could think of this uh, bigger envelope including smaller ones. You could have a smaller envelope where you have better handling qualities and performance and then a slightly bigger envelope which is the boundaries of uh, handling qualities and performance. If we do a, a kind of parallel to what is the definition of the uh, flight envelopes, then we would see how the design limits would uh, be the same as the limit flight envelope. The operational flight envelope is uh, 
the boundaries of controllability and performances, while the normal flight envelope, it is the core of the envelope where we have the best handling qualities and performance. In the next section, we're going to go through the AC2570 presentations of flight envelope. We're going to do that to show you some graphs uh, taken by, from the handling qualities rating method. Uh, two graphs are shown, uh, one for flaps up and one for flaps down configuration. It could be a method on which to uh, build on, uh, however, we need to take into consideration that there could be different ambient parameters that affect uh, the flight envelopes when we consider VTOL, and also VTOLs might have different characteristic speeds if we compare it to CS25 aircraft. We also need to consider that we might have a variable flight envelopes depending on the state of charge of the batteries we probably would need to reconsider the way flight envelopes are presented and or displayed to the crew. So the first presentation we're going to go through is the envelope for flaps up. So you see we have uh, different uh, parameters displayed, we have different uh, characteristic uh, speeds on the x-axis and we have depicted also concentric areas which are defining the different uh, flight envelopes. Another example shown is the flight envelopes with uh, flaps down. Here we see that the characteristic speeds of course have changed if we compare them to the flaps up uh, configuration. Even the parameters might be affected depending on the uh, aircraft design. So in this slide we're going to go through an example of how we would need to adapt the characteristic speeds when we consider VTOLs. So here we have the different speeds which are coming from structural requirements. They are the ones in green. So we have a VD, we have a VNE and the VH, which could be equal or uh, different. And then we have a V Bravo, which is the maximum flight speed in turbulence. If we consider these speeds from what we said before, we could draw the limit flight envelope at the boundaries of the VD. So the VD would be defining the limit flight envelope the operational flight envelope would be defined by the VNE or VH, whichever is higher, and to define the normal flight envelope, we could consider the referring to uh, the velocity normal operation, which is a speed not determined by structural requirements, but it could be a speed which is determined by handling qualities or performance requirements. Another adaptation which we might need to do is the following. What would happen to the flight envelopes when we change different energy levels or state of charge and configuration? So before we spoke about a graph which was only in the two dimensions. Here in VTOLs we would have much more than two configurations, so we'll probably need to have a different axis. And moreover, if these different configurations give us different flight envelopes, these flight envelopes might change also with a different state of charge. So we probably would need also to rethink the way we are displaying the flight envelopes, both in the certification activity and also during execution of the flight. So this brings us to the conclusion. The stall characteristics, if an aircraft can stall, are expected to be demonstrated in the same way we would do in CS23. So we would need to determine the minimum stall speed according to 2110 and then the stall characteristics according to 2150. Flight envelopes touches many parts of the special condition VTOL. It is the topic that covers almost all subparts. EASA is presenting only the principles of flight envelopes, which we understand is a novel concept. It is up to industry to propose possible means of compliance to the applicable requirements. A Euro-K standard would be highly welcomed. Flight envelopes may vary with the remaining energy level and the state of charge and different configuration, so we would probably also need to reconsider the way we are displaying them to the crew. So I hope this was interesting and I would like to thank you all for your attention.